What makes this riff interesting? To me, it sounds like a really generic metal riff that we've all heard a million times. So why would it be interesting? If we did a classical analysis on this simple riff, you would see that it consists of four different scales and changed between them six different times. That doesn't seem right, but it is. In this video, I want to introduce you to the idea of the metal scale. You're already using it, you just don't know it yet. So the first thing we need to do is dive into a bit of theory. Don't worry, we won't go insanely deep and I'll make sure to keep it brief. Metal is most often based around the minor scale. On a guitar, these are the notes that are used. Inside this scale, seven modes are hiding. The way we find those modes is by keeping the exact same notes but changing the start position. For example, the first minor mode of A minor is A minor. The second mode is B Locrian. We start on B and end on B, but we keep the same notes as A minor. The next is C Ionian, also known as C major. Start on C, end on C, keep the same notes as A minor. You get the idea. All of these modes give different flavors to your sound. I think it's worth learning them, but that is not the point of this video. For now, because we're focusing on metal, we want to focus on the minor modes. So the minor modes are Aeolian, also known as the minor scale, Dorian, Phrygian, and I'm going to include Locrian in here as well. Now each of these minor modes has something in common with its neighbors, but is also unique. So if we take our minor scale, which I'm guessing most people have some familiarity with, and we raise the sixth degree, it turns into Dorian. See, lots of things in common, but it's also unique. Going from the minor scale again, if we lower the second, we get Phrygian. And if we take Phrygian and lower the fifth, we get Locrian. Yay, the minor modes. Now, if we lay this out in a sensible order, we can see that from Dorian, we change one note at a time and we end up with a new mode with each note change. There is a pattern to these notes that I'm changing, but once again, that is not the scope of this video. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a deeper dive into it. Now going back to the minor scale for a second, there are a couple of other adjustments we can make to this that will give us different flavors again. If we raise the seventh, we get harmonic minor. If we raise the sixth as well, we get the melodic minor. And the final scale to include for now would be the blues scale, which is exactly like our minor pentatonic, but includes one more note here. Now, you don't need to remember anything about these modes or scales that I've just listed, but it's useful to keep in mind as we uncover the metal scale. The reason why I've mentioned all these scales is because an uncountable number of metal songs move quite freely from one scale to another within a single riff, just like the example at the beginning of the video. If we were to look at these through a typical classical analysis, we would be changing scale every few notes, or we would just say that there's loads of chromaticisms being used. Chromaticisms simply means that we're using notes that do not belong in the parent scale. But without boring you with the details, it feels like a typical classical analysis doesn't really apply to metal riffs. Like sure, we can manage and there are labels that would make sense intellectually, but these labels do not make it easier to understand and they sure as hell do not help a metal musician be creative with theory. So with all that out of the way, let's look at the metal scale and what it means to you. So what is the metal scale? It's a fluid scale that borrows notes from anywhere and everywhere as is required for that moment of music. If we take all the notes from the image in our previous section and list how many times each individual note appears, we can pretty clearly see the most common to least common notes. Now, just because some notes appear more than others does not mean that they are more important. For example, both the flattened fifth and the major sixth only appear in two scales each, yet the flattened fifth is one of the most popular notes in metal music and the major sixth is one of the least popular notes. So I'm going to make some adjustments and create a hierarchy that I think makes the most sense. Now your opinion may differ from mine here and I encourage that. If you disagree with me, it means we're going to end up with different music. So by all means, play with this idea. The list that I've built comes from my 20 years of experience in playing and writing metal. My list is based on the patterns that I've seen over that time. If you've got a different patterns that you've seen, then you've got a different list. With that said, here's my list. The notes that tend towards the top of the hierarchy are basically the blues scale. Beyond that depends on which flavor of minor you prefer to lean towards in that moment. If you'd like to download this, there is a free cheat sheet linked below. Now, a way to look at this list is that the higher up, the more stability and safety you have in note choices. If you're hanging around in the blues scale territory, most of the notes will sound good most of the time. However, the further down you push the list, the more unstable things become. For example, maybe you want to include the flat six because you like its vibe. 
Good choice, I love this note, but because it's lower on the list, sometimes it just feels off. It doesn't mean anything except that in context of this moment in this song, it calls for a different note. Maybe that's the major 6, which according to my diagram is even more unstable. But in your song, the flat 6 didn't work, so you have to try the other options. If the major 6 doesn't work either, keep trying other notes until you find what works best. It all depends on how you want your music to sound. The reason why I've placed the major 6 and the major 3rd down the bottom is that I find most of the time most metal artists ignore these notes because these notes lean more towards the major scale sound. If you want to scare off a metal musician, just start playing in major. Yuck. Now, this doesn't mean that the major 3rd or the major 6 cannot be used, but it does mean that you need to prepare your listener for it. How you do that is up to you, but if you give your music the right context, it will work. My default choice falls to either the Phrygian dominant or the Byzantine scale, but the octatonic is also a great option. Once again, it doesn't matter if you learn the scales or not, what matters most is the context that you present the notes in. If you want to break the cardinal rule of metal and use the major third in a song, you can and you should. But if it sounds cheesy, use one of the more metal sounding major scales. So, now that we've established what the metal scale is, it's very important to point out that this should not be treated like a free-for-all chromatic idea. Generally, metal is pretty static in its harmony, meaning that most ideas are based around the open string. Let's say that we're in D minor on a guitar that's in drop D. If we move to D blues or D phrygian or D whatever, we're keeping every idea centered around D. Our ear is first and foremost connected with that note, and it allows us to make some pretty weird note choices, but it still makes sense to listen to. So long as we keep ourselves connected to the root note, it's going to be possible for our ear to follow. So just keep that in mind. When you're riffing out on an open string, it's free game. Follow your ear and let the metal scale gently guide you into different unrelated notes. But if you happen to be playing through chord progressions, you no longer have such a strong connection to the root note. If this is the case, it can be very useful to pick a specific scale to make it easier to listen to. For anyone who wants to dive deeper into a similar theory idea and see how it's used outside of metal, there are two concepts to explore. The first is parallel modes. So like I mentioned at the start, you get the modes of the A minor scale by playing the exact notes in the scale but starting on a different note each time. These are called the relative modes because they're all related to a single parent scale. I hope it's obvious that every single mode has its own unique shape. If two modes had the same shape, it would sound the same. But just to demonstrate, if we put Dorian and Locrian side by side, the shape of one is clearly different to the shape of the other. Now, if we take all the shapes of all the modes and play them from the same starting note, we get what's called parallel modes. I personally found that playing around with parallel modes really helped me understand the purpose of modes in music. So if you're struggling with modes, play with this concept. The general idea with parallel modes is that if you're playing in E minor, you're free to move to E mixolydian or E locrian or E whatever through the song. However, this is different from the metal scale because usually Usually a parallel scale is only given that label when there's a clear modulation from one established mode to a new one. Metal, on the other hand, has no allegiance. It changes and borrows and steals as it pleases. The second theory concept worth exploring is modal interchange. With modal interchange, you borrow chords from parallel modes, but you maintain the key center. Modal interchange is also known as borrowed chords. It tends to be called modal interchange when being taught or discussed theoretically, but in more casual situations, people will say that it's a borrowed chord. Either way, it's the same thing. This is a practical tool to use, but once again, it doesn't really fit our criteria. You're still maintaining the home key, you're just stepping away for a chord here or there. Also, I think modal interchange makes way more sense when you're looking at music that actually features chords and chord progressions, unlike most metal. Let's be real, in metal, we're rarely using anything more complicated than a power chord. So that's the metal scale. If you base your ideas around an open string like most metal tends to do, you're free to essentially use whatever note you want. When things get a bit too experimental, reconnect with the safer notes to make sense of your choices. When you're wanting to choose the unsafe choices, justify them in a practical way. For further study, learn about parallel modes and borrowed chords. Once again, there is a free cheat sheet for this linked below. For now, I recommend watching my 10 most common songwriting questions as it helps dispel a whole bunch of bullshit about songwriting. Catch you soon.